Shalom Yasharala, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kal Halayim La, Allah Hayyanawa, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakudash, Shin Yakabai Gawala Rakab, Hazakwanyim, Waha Shalayakim Nawa, Shal Yasharala, Shalawan Wabawa Rak, La Bakarium, Shal Yasharala. Peace, Israel. Bless the Heavenly Father. Bless His only begotten Son. All praise to our power. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakudash, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honor to our apostles and elders, great millstone. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. Shalom. The holy angels are so-called black men. <clears throat> the holy angels are so-called black men. And this is going to be the first episode of this small series I'm doing. Proving the effect. Okay. As a matter of fact, dealing with the word angel, the word angel in the Hebrew is malaak, and it means messenger. And that's exactly what they are. They're messengers of the Heavenly Father. They are messengers. They are representatives of the Heavenly Father because they are sent to do the work of the Heavenly Father on the planet Earth because a king has messengers. He's not going to deal with you directly. Okay? And that king being the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he uses his angels, the council of the heavens, he uses them to do his work on the planet Earth. By working on the minds of men and also showing men visions. Okay? Guiding men into a certain direction. All right? So that's what they do. And as a matter of fact, also us brothers, we're angels in the spirit. Actually, we're angels in human bodies. We are angels in human form. Okay? But but also the fact that we have the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, we come in the spirit of angels. Just like Apostle Paul said. How men received him as an angel in the spirit. Okay? And as a matter of fact, dealing with the word apostle, you know, dealing with our apostles, the word apostle means sent forth or to send out. Okay? Sent forth. So the men of the Lord are sent forth to do the work of the Heavenly Father on the planet Earth, similar to the angels. Okay? Because we're the prophets, us brothers in this truth, beginning with our apostles and elders. On down to us, we're prophets, you know? So we're sent forth. We are also representatives. But dealing with the holy angels, the council of the heavens, which the heavenly father, he doesn't need a counselor, but he has them anyway. They have their purpose, okay? They worship Yahweh Bashem Yahushai all the time. That's all they do because they're celestial beings, but they work on the minds of men and they also show men visions, you know? And they're melanated spiritual beings. They don't look like Edomites. They don't look like so-called Caucasians. All right? You know, they, they look like so-called black men. That's the form they come in. You know? They're Judites, basically. Just like the Heavenly Father is. And just like His only begotten Son. All right? But, you know, sticking to the point, it's the first episode. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to expound upon a video Going back to 1988, an Ephraimite by the name of Amari Rivetta had a so-called UFO encounter. He had an encounter with a chariot and he, and he met the representatives or the beings in that chariot. OK, he met the men in that chariot, you know, in particular, one man. All right. He mainly talked to him. So I'm going to play this video of this encounter and he's going to speak on it and I'm going to expound further. On the morning of May 14, 1988, Amari Riviera, a young man from Puerto Rico, photographed a giant disc, followed and circled by two jet interceptors. What makes the sensational pictures even more interesting is Riviera's claim that he had contact with the occupants of this UFO. Hello, my name is Amari Rivera. I live in Puerto Rico. And back in 1988, I was working in a nightclub and uh, there was a, a musical group there. One of my cousins wanted me to photograph the musical group, and she loaned me a camera with some film. On my way back home, uh, I encountered uh, two small uh, beings, two small strange men, which I didn't think were uh, men from outer space. And 
They, they took me somewhere where there were other people uh, besides myself, uh, uh, other human people like from Puerto Rico, I guess. Now those small beings that he encountered, those were other Ephraimites, other so-called Puerto Ricans. Those were not angels. Those were regular men, you know, average men. But these men are going to guide him to the actual angel himself, you know. And how you know that uh, these men were not angels because the angels are very tall. They're very tall, okay? Uh, from here, another human being showed up. He claimed to be from a distant planet. He was dressed in black. He had a dark skin, but he was, he was not a Negro. He had a, a black, long black hair up to the shoulders. You see the Yasharala? He was told to say he was not a Negro. He was told to say that. The holy angels are so-called Negroes. That being he encountered was a so-called Negro. Okay? A so-called black man with a gigantic afro, with a huge afro. That's why he said he had hair down to his shoulder. He had a huge afro. Basically, the holy angels... They look like the Jackson 5, going back to the 70s. They look like the Jackson 5, but with big beards, okay? They're very tall. They have big afros and big beards. That's how the holy angels look. But he was, he was not a Negro. He had... He had a dark skin... But he was he was not a Negro. He he had a dark skin, but he was he was not a Negro. He had a a black long black hair up to the shoulders. So the being that Amari Rivetta encountered was indeed a holy angel. Okay, and the way that he described him lines up with the description that's written in the scriptures. And I'm gonna get it in Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter one, verse one. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Kibar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of the Most High. Okay? Visions of the powers, actually. You know, visions of the angels. So, you know, the, the uh, powers, the al -Hayim. And a, a, a vision is like a hologram. Or a projection. Holographic images. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kabar. And the hand of Yahweh was there upon him. And I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. That whirlwind is a chariot, a so-called UFO. A great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. Like you see on Independence Day. The first Independence Day, it showed you that gigantic chariot coming out of a cloud. And it was a great fire enfolding itself. With <laughs> that chariot came out of it. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Now this word for amber is not talking about amber as in a resin. It's like you have amber, the uh, tree resin. It's not talking about that. That word for amber goes back to electrum, which is basically a copper colored coin or a brass or bronze colored coin, you know, dark, dark brown, you know, which is the color of the holy angels. Verse five, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. These four living creatures are four angels, four archangels. In particular, you have Michael, Gabriel, Uriel and Raphael, which really is seven holy angels, you know, but the, uh, the scriptures only expound upon four. Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael. 
So four holy angels, four archangels, and this was their appearance. This is what they looked like. They had the likeness of a man. So they looked like men, melanated men. And everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings. Okay. Now, this is also literal right here. Okay. This is literal. Because see, when the holy angels come on the planet earth, they take the likeness of a man. But their form in the heavens, you know, it's, it's pretty rough looking. It's terrible looking actually. Because they actually have four heads. Or four faces and four wings. That's how the angels look in their pure form. But those four heads or, or four faces, they have meanings also. And the faces have attributes. The face of a man represents intelligence. The face of a lion represents courage. The face of an ox represents strength and the face of an eagle represents swiftness okay but when the angels come on the planet earth they take the likeness or the form of a man verse 7 and their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and it said the sole of a calf's foot because a calf is a clean animal it's a pure animal and the holy angels they are pure because they constantly stand before the throne of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They constantly stand before the throne of Yahweh. Okay? All they do is praise the Heavenly Father. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. So their feet, their feet now, is sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Similar to our Lord, when you read in Revelation chapter 1, Verse 13 down to 15, it tells you that it tells you that Yahweh's feet was like the color of brass as if it burned in a uh, furnace. It's basically saying the same thing here, but about the holy angels. Okay? So their feet, which are feet the same color of your whole body, their feet sparkle like the color of burnished brass. Now, that word for burnished. Where it says burnished brass, right? That word for burnished in the Hebrew is qualal. Qualal. Okay. And it means burnished, polished. And it says in the uh, Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, it says use the brass. Of brass. What's the color of brass? Okay. Now. When you go on the free dictionary .com for burnish, let's get to the root. Dealing with the root word, it says that burnish goes back to burnishing from old French brunier to make brown. From brune brown. So to burnish, it literally means to make brown. Okay. Burnish means to make brown. Hey, this is some heat, man. Call halayim la alahaya now. We how about shimia osha? Because truth is springing out the earth. Okay. Now, right now, when you uh, jump down, it says twelve seventy five to thirteen twenty five, Middle English, going back to Anglo French, Bernice. Middle French Brunis, uh, long S of Brunier, Brunier to darken, polish, brune, brown. So to burnish, it means to darken. Okay? Burnish means to darken. So the holy angels are so called black men. Ain't no way around it, man. Forget about that damn Renaissance art. Forget about that, man. Little white uh, naked babies. That's wicked, man. Okay? The holy angels do not have leprosy. Now, certain brothers in the truth, because we're under the curses, Israel has been scattered amongst the nations, and our seed being mingled amongst the other nations, and Israelite men having sex with heathen women, 
having sex with Edomite women, a lot of our people look like Edomites now, you know, because our seed is among many nations, you know, so a lot of our brothers and sisters, they have that leprous skin, okay, but see, that curse is going to be removed from them in the kingdom of heaven, but dealing with the holy angels, because see, they're in the heavens, they don't have, you know, these uh, human bodies, they have a celestial form, they have a pure form, and their form is, is just how it is, man. You know, dark skin. You know, when they come on the earth, they appear to men in visions, you know, in a trance. A, a man will be in a trance, and that's what they see. That's what they see, man. And I've seen one for myself, you know. Lord will, I'm going to do a video on that. You know, I gave a testimony on it before, all right. But sticking to the point, this holy angel, this man encountered, was definitely a so-called Negro, okay? And not only because of how he looked, but, but, but uh, by the message, but by the message that he gave, by the words that he spoke, that's how you know that he was a holy angel because the things that he spoke went back to the scriptures, okay? He didn't say anything deceptive. He didn't lie, all right? So I'm going to play some more of this video on what the angel said, and I'm going to expound. And he spoke to us uh, with the mouth, uh, verbally, and not, no telepathic speaking. Uh, he showed us uh, various uh, uh, projections, uh, which looked uh, very real, the projections. And he informed us about a whole bunch of things that are even still incredible to me. Uh, then uh, he, they returned me to... What did this holographic projection show? Uh, the holographs uh, were mainly, uh, the first one that I can remember was a, a, like a short trip uh, through space. Uh, we saw where he, he came from, where he said to be from. We saw his people, we saw his, his the houses that they use. And, and the now, first off, I want to say that this being is not from another planet, okay? Because of Mari Rivera. I also said that he was from a distant planet. No, the holy angels, they're from the fourth dimension. Okay, the third heaven. That's where they're from. The spirit world. Okay. And Amari Rivetta said that the first vision or the first projection, so-called hologram, that the man showed him was where he came from. Okay. And he said that the man showed him, you know, where they lived and, uh, and the type of houses that they have. Now, this is one of three things. Either the holy angel showed him a glimpse of the spirit world, a very small glimpse of the spirit world, or the holy angel showed him how the kingdom of heaven is going to be on the planet Earth, or how in the kingdom of heaven, the Israelites are going to live on different planets. Okay. Because the holy angels, they don't live on other planets. But the Israelites, you know, which we're angels on the earth, we're, we're you know, the Lord's people, you know, on the earth. We're going to live on other planets in the kingdom. All right. So I'm going to expound upon this first projection. Okay. Because the holy angel probably showed him a glimpse of the third heaven, you know, which the Lord did that with the apostle Paul. OK. This is Second Corinthians, chapter 12, verse one. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. A vision or a, a, a projection, right? Same thing, man. I knew a man in Hamashiach above 14 years ago. This man he's talking about is himself because the apostle Paul was stoned. So he was dead for a while and the Lord brought him back. And this is what happened when he had that out of body experience. I knew a man in Hamashiach above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I could not tell or whether out of the body, I could not tell the most high North such an one caught up to the third heaven, the spirit world. Okay. Because the first heaven is the planet earth itself. Okay. The second heaven is, is outer space and the third heaven would be the heaven of heavens the spirit world 
Verse 3. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell the Most High North how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words. With the word un unspeakable, it means inexpressible, meaning you can't describe it. And heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter, meaning he can't explain it. It was so glorious. It was so opulent. So grandeur. Okay. So, you, you know, Amari Rivetta probably saw a glimpse of the spirit world or he could have seen us in the kingdom of heaven on the planet Earth. Get a quick scripture on that. Quick scripture. Isaiah. Which Isaiah got a lot of heat dealing with the kingdom of heaven. That'd have to be a separate lesson right there. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former should not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people, the Israelites. The Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians. This kingdom is for you. Only. Okay. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Right. So he could have saw a, a small glimpse of us in the kingdom of heaven. On the earth. Revelation chapter 21 verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. Verse 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. But also, we're going to be on other planets as well. Pursuing to what Yahweh Shah said. St. John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in the Most High, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And those many mansions is talking about many planets. Many planets, many places to dwell in the universe. Okay. So in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to live on other planets, but the planet Earth itself is going to be the headquarters. OK. We're mainly going to be on the Earth, but we're also going to branch out because there's going to be so many Israelites on the planet. We're going to need to uh, branch out. We're going to need to, you know, have our dwellings elsewhere because every Israelite man is going to become his own nation. We're going to have so many seeds, so many sons and daughters. That the planet Earth is not going to be able to contain us. We're going to have to branch out. Okay. And that's the point, man. Now we're going to meet up in Jerusalem for the high holy days. And we're also going to judge the nations. But we're going to live on other planets. Other dwellings. Living in different galaxies. In the universe. That's a part of the blessings of the kingdom. Okay. So that's dealing with the first vision. All right. Now let's hear the second vision. The second one was about a, a meteor or a rock falling to earth in the near future, which is going to cause a lot of um, havoc in, in the world. This would fall, in, it's going to fall in, in very near the, the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, and those um, other small islands. But it's going to affect the whole world, not just uh, Puerto Rico.
Now we said that the second vision is talking about a meteorite or a rock hitting the earth and basically hitting around the Caribbean and the uh, adjoining islands, but it's going to affect the whole planet earth. That's not a meteorite. That's not a, a, a big rock. That's talking about nuclear holocaust, nuclear missiles. During World War III, because America is going to be destroyed. The nuclear missiles, yeah, they're going to hit near the uh, Caribbean because America is near the, the uh, Caribbean. It's talking about those nuclear missiles. That's what that meteorite represented. Let's get some quick scriptures on that. Because America, North America, the United States will be completely destroyed. Completely wiped out in the very near future, in our lifetime. No man knows the hour or the day, but we measure the times. It's in our lifetime. There's not going to be another generation after this. This is the end. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 8. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire, similar to a meteorite. A great mountain burning with fire. Picture that. Picture that in your mind. A great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Okay? And the sea represents people. And the third part of the sea became blood. The third part of the sea represents Esau. Because Esau, the Edomites, you so-called white people, you're the sons of the wicked. You're the third part of men. This is the end of your world, the end of Esau's world. And the third part of the creatures were, which were in the sea and had life died. Let me read that again. And the third part of the creatures which, which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. It keeps saying third part because that represents Esau's complete destruction as a world power. And you're going into slavery next after this. Verse 10, and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, a great star falling from heaven, similar to a meteorite or a rock. There fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon a third part of the rivers, dealing with Esau again, and upon the fountains of waters. And that's the point on that. Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake it's not talking about a great earthquake it's talking about nuclear destruction which is going to shake the earth Isaiah the book of Isaiah chapter 24 verse 1 behold Yahweh Make of the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Verse 19. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly from those nuclear missiles. So it's, it's similar to the feeling of an earthquake. Jumping up to verse 18. Proving it's the missiles. And it came to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. The windows from on high are open, meaning that sky is opened up and them nuclear missiles are dropping out the sky. That's what it's talking about. Okay, those nuclear missiles, they come out the silo, they go up. Into the atmosphere, into the upper atmosphere, all right, and even into the outer atmosphere, you know. But but they go up basically, you know, around the uh, the satellites up in that area, and they come back down on planet Earth, you know. And those warheads touch down. They touch down. Verse twenty: The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage. 
And that's the point on that. That's the point. So back in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. We got a blood moon coming up. A blood moon represents that nuclear destruction. Okay, because the constellations are going to be blocked out. When those nuclear missiles are shot off. And come down from the sky. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Okay. Now Esau represents the uh, stars of heaven. You know. Because a star. It's a illustrious prince. You're the rulers. Okay. You are the gods of this world. And you're going to fall. You're going to fall from heaven. Just like Yahweh Shah said. He saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He saw Esau go down fast because you Edomites are going to go down in one hour. In one hour, America is going to be destroyed. Okay? And also, once again, the constellations are going to be blocked out during this time. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth. So your system is going to go down quick. Even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs. When she is shaken of a mighty wind. What's that mighty wind? Hey, <laughs> you know what that is? What's that mighty wind? Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 1. Thus said Yahweh, behold, I will raise up against Babylon, America, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me. A destroying wind. That nuclear destruction. Nuclear missiles. That's the wind. Revelation chapter 6 verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. What's, what's the heaven talking about? Esau's system. Okay. Esau's world. Okay. All these different buildings. These modern day caves. is going to go up in smoke. It's going to go up into big mushroom clouds all over the earth, but especially in America. Completely wiped out. America is going to be wiped out, man. With a broom of destruction. Okay, and once again, the holy angel told Amari Rivera that it's going to affect the whole earth. It's going to hit near the Caribbean and, and near those islands because it's going to destroy America, but it's going to affect the whole earth. Let me read some more. Revelation 6 and 15. Well, read in 14 again. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, the mushroom clouds. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So it hit near the islands, okay, because it destroyed America, but it affected the whole earth. Verse 15, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man. So everybody on the earth hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Okay. That's going to happen, man. And people that have money, you have these different millionaires and billionaires, especially billionaires and especially trillionaires. The Rothschilds and the other elite banking families, they're going to be hiding in the underground bunkers when these nuclear missiles are shot off. But everybody else, they're going to, they're going to uh, seek for shelter. They're going to be hiding so they don't get destroyed. Verse 16, And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is coming back. The Heavenly Father Yahweh is sending his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, to come back. Okay, so when America is destroyed, Yahweh Shah is going to be coming back simultaneously during that same time that America is destroyed. Because the Lord is going to save his elect. So everybody on the earth is going to see that huge fathership. That huge so-called UFO. And along with that, an innumerable company of angels. Holy angels. 
But once again, dealing with that media, right? That's talking about America being destroyed via nuclear missiles. Revelation chapter 16, verse 17. And a seventh angel poured out his vow into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. It was not a great earthquake, literally. It's the nuclear destruction, and it feels like a great earthquake. It's going to feel like an earthquake. Such as was not since men were upon the earth, because it's not a literal earthquake. And that's why this is the worst time in history. You know, this is the worst time in history, and it's never going to happen again like this. Okay? And it says, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. The third part of men, Esau's destruction. This is the end of his world. This is the end of Edom. The end of your rulership, Satan, you Edomites. Okay? And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. Because once America is destroyed, that's the last of the kingdom of the heathen. This is the last of the kingdom of the heathen. That's why it says, and the cities of the nations fell. Because once Esau goes down, the rest of you heathens going to go down too. And then Israel is coming up. And it tells you that we shall dwell in safety alone. You other nations, you're not going to be ruling side by side with us. You're not going to be joint heirs with us in our kingdom. This is the kingdom of the Israelites coming. Only. Okay? And y'all going to slavery. Beginning with you Edomites. And Great Babylon, North America, the United States came in remembrance before the Most High to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, those nuclear destruction, those nuclear missiles, excuse me, that nuclear destruction, those nuclear missiles. And every island fled away. And he explained that because it hit near the uh, Caribbean and the other islands. All right, let me read that again. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Right, you other governments, you're not coming up. You know, China not coming up next. Russia not coming up next. North Korea, none of y'all, man. You're just instruments that the Lord is using to destroy America. Okay? And that's the point right there. Let me read verse 21. And there fell upon men great hell out of heaven. Like a meteorite. Or like a great rock. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Every stone, a rock, <laughs> right? A meteorite. It's talking about a warhead, okay? Really, the warheads. Okay? Every stone about the weight of a talent. Okay? Which I want to say that the weight of a talent is about 75 pounds, give or take. It's pretty heavy. And men blasphemed the Most High because of the plague of the hell. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. Because it's actually nuclear missiles. It's not, it's not literal hell. Okay? Right. Now let me go from there. Let me get Jeremiah chapter 49. Because everyone is going to feel this destruction. Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 21. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. Similar to an earthquake. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. And the cry, at the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. So you're going to feel this nuclear destruction overseas. You're going to feel it in the east. And also, people are going to be watching it on their smartphones, on their tablets, on their laptops, on their desktops, on their flat screen. Uh, 4K TVs. This is going to be televised. All men are going to see it. All men and women and children overseas are going to see it. Okay? And that's the point, man. America will be destroyed in our lifetime. And that's just more proof. So that proves that this was indeed a holy angel that talked to this Ephraimite, Amari Rivera.
telling them things to come. And it all lines up with the scriptures, which is more proof. That's a holy angel, not only by his appearance, but also the message that he gave. He didn't come lying. He wasn't a lying spirit. OK, so he wasn't an angel on the left hand side. He wasn't an evil angel because you have evil angels, which are demons. This is a holy angel, a righteous angel. OK, now he showed him one more vision of things to come. And I'm going to play that and expound upon that. 